Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Credit Chat Live. I'm Rod Griffin, Senior Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. It's been a while since I've been on and missed talking to all of you. Uh, we and I just made the decision to not be live in out of respect for what's been happening and in, in respect for Black Lives Matter and for all of the social change we're going through uh, and uh, respect and support all of uh, all of the positive change we're seeing and, and want to make sure that uh, we get back, though, because I think it's important we continue to have conversations. Uh, I mean, we've talked a lot about uh, within our company and within, within my family and within with friends and others about what we're seeing and, and you know, talk to our, our social media team and others within Experian. And we, we are all supportive of and allies in um, what's been happening and, and making positive change and in and, and Pride Week as well. Um, but we also know that there are more issues that need to be addressed and, and uh, financial equality and financial access is one of them. Helping share information is important. So I wanted to get back, make sure we are continuing to have those conversations and help answer your questions. So I'll do my very best. I actually may have to jump off a bit earlier. I'm hosting a panel uh, for a virtual symposium uh, starting just after two. So uh, about thin files and, and accredited invisibles and how we address that issue. So continue to, to work those. So thank you so much for, for joining and jumping in already. Um, people have questions waiting, so I'll do my very best to answer. Barbie E3064, thanks for joining. And 3WKB, is there a rule of thumb as to how often one should refinance to not hurt credit as much? Um, I think it's important that when you refinance, you understand why and what your situation is. I presume talking about like a mortgage, for example, uh, and when you're thinking about applying for credit, we're talking about inquiries most of the time and how those will affect your applications. If you're applying for a mortgage refinance, a mortgage loan, those inquiries don't affect mortgage applications or auto applications car for cars. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. If you're applying for other kinds of credit, that, that potential new debt can, af can affect your scores in the form of the inquiry minimally and for a short period of time. All of that said, uh, you know, I think refinancing, particularly something as large as a mortgage, you need to look at what's the cost of that refinance. W will you have the mortgage long enough to recoup the, the difference or the savings? Lots of considerations, more than the credit score, in fact. Uh, but it's a good idea, you know, if you're applying for credit uh, to, you know, not apply unless you know exactly why you're applying and not too often. And that's a very vague answer. Uh, typically, inquiries will affect a credit score you know, for two to three months uh, and minimally. So, you know, if you're thinking about applying uh, for a mortgage loan, any applications within generally a 14-day up to sometimes a 30-day period will be excluded from the score. So you don't have to worry about it from that perspective. Uh, so worry less about that and, worry, and think more about how much is that, that in, are you going to save in terms of interest uh, and other fees? How much are the fees to reapply to refinance? And is that going to, will you recoup that difference uh, over time? Typically, what I've always been told is you need to see more, if we're talking about mortgages in particular, you need to see a decrease in your interest rate on your mortgage of a point and a half to two points before, and then have that loan for another five years or more before you'll recoup the, the cost in many cases. So look at what, that difference is uh, you don't have to worry about your credit report so much. Just be sure you check three to six months in advance before applying. So you know, everything's in good shape and where you need it to be. Uh, rates are certainly low now, so it might be a good time uh, to apply. Uh, do you know how many points a credit check when refinancing a home mortgage loan? Yeah. So if you're refinancing a home mortgage loan, when you apply that inquiry doesn't affect the scores at all. So zero is the answer for that. Uh, is paying off a car loan, uh, Mastisco 14 is paying off a car loan increase your score. What will happen when you pay off an auto loan is there will be a big change to the status of being reported as paid. Your score may dip initially as a result of that. Usually if you not a huge amount, you know, it depends on your score, the scoring system, your, your overall credit history and so on. But you'll see a change in the score typically down initially and then bounce back up and show that you manage that that well. Uh, and that change just causes some instability. So the day you pay it off or even the next 30 days, don't look at your scores. Wait until the, a month or two has passed, then check your scores and see where they are. You should see them bounce back up and probably increase 
uh, depending on everything else in the history, of course. Uh, but typically, we'll go up. Uh, and three, WKB, thanks for joining live, being here. Miss Precious, 74, thanks for being here. Uh, J Beauty, 1122. Uh, am I familiar with IRRLVA loan? If so, that you know, I'm not familiar with specific loan products. I can speak to the credit history implications, the credit score uh, issues around mortgage loans. Mortgages can be very complex, obviously. Uh, and so it's good to talk to your mortgage lender, uh, maybe, you know, a counselor, a credit counselor, someone who has better insight uh, into exactly what those offers are, because all of the loans can differ and the criteria differ. Uh, so I really can't speak with any authority to that particular loan product or any other loan product itself. That's dependent on the lender and the, the requirements and the law around it uh, and, the, and the regulation. So sorry, I can't help you there. Uh, James125, thanks for joining uh, Nuni74, welcome to Periscope. Uh, Kitty Guava, uh, I can't really speak to Credit Karma. I can tell you they are a competitor. Uh, what I will say is this. If you come to Experian and get our app, uh, you will get a FICO 8 score, which is the most commonly used score. You'll get your credit report, you get risk factors and so on. It's free as well. Uh, and I think that anything you're doing to learn more about your credit history, to be able to manage that history well, and to make good decisions is going to be valuable and important to your financial success. So um, I would hope you would use Experian, but I'm a bit biased in that regard. I think we, I truly believe we have the, a better app and a better uh, resource and we're the source of the information. But um, if you're using a tool and it's helping you and you're learning information, it's accurate, you know, by all means, you know, use that tool. Um, Come to Experian, if you will. Uh, that, that'll be my sales pitch for today. Uh, Priceless, triple seven, Tanya J. Thanks for joining, being part of the chat today. Uh, Amanda, SC 2020, thanks for joining. And uh, if you're just joining, uh, I'm Rod Griffin, Senior Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. This is Credit Chat Live. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on, but I try to be here Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern, just to answer your questions about credit reporting and credit scoring and fraud and ID theft, all of those things that are so important in understanding personal finance and helping improve your overall financial health uh, and, and well-being. And that's really the more we talk, the more we have a dialogue, the more I, that we share information, the more people learn. Because if you have a question, others do too. And we want to make sure we share that information. So feel free to ask any questions you have. I'll do my very best to answer we're certainly in a tumultuous time in terms of COVID-19 and what's happening there as we're coming out of the uh, uh, lockdown or, or the quarantine and we're seeing changes there. So I'm starting to hear from people saying, you know, how do I make sure my credit report's in good shape? What do I need to do there? So we'll talk about that as well. But feel free to ask. Glad to see the questions. Now, how about returning a card to the lender before finishing paying it off? What's the impact? So Matisco 14, if you return a card, it's called a voluntary repossession it will be reported as a voluntary repossession or repossession in your credit report. That's going to have a negative effect uh, on your credit scores and a significant one because you did not repay the debt in full as agreed. Anytime you do that, it's going to have a negative impact on your scores. It's going to be there for probably seven years, up to seven years. Uh, and so um, that's a, uh, you know, so it will hurt your scores. Uh, and you can recover over time. So don't, you know, if you're returning it, uh, the, the, uh, it will be reported as a, as a repossession uh, because you didn't repay that debt as a, uh, in full as agreed. Uh, so be aware of that. The other thing to be aware of is if you return a car uh, or have a car repossessed, they, the lender will then sell that car in order to recoup the remainder of the debt. If they can't recover the full amount when they sell the car, they may send you something called a 1099 form. A 1099 form is a tax form that says that the remaining amount is essentially income. They're not going to uh, require that you repay it, but it's treated as income for tax purposes. And so you would owe income tax on that amount. So you know, even though it's been returned, you may have to pay taxes on it. It's kind of a unpleasant, but to, to be mild, uh, to say it mildly, but it's, uh, um, but beware if you get a 1099 form, you may have to pay taxes on any amount that's not recovered when they sell the car as well. So any remaining debt. Uh, uh, so you may see that. So be aware of that as well. Um, it's, you know, it's, I think it's important. It's kind of unfortunate, <laughs> but, but the way the system works. Um, Andrew Bolton, nine, thanks for joining Sunshine 8041. Thanks for being here. Uh, little buddy, will you get a call from Experian for suspicious activity? No. 
Uh, Experian does not do outbound calling. If you are a subscriber to one of our monitoring services, you would get an email, maybe a text, depending on how you're signed up and what you've asked for and, and what the service offers. You will not get a call from Experian. Experian does not do outbound calling. So if someone calls and says they're from Experian, they're not. So be aware of that. Really important to know that would not be a legitimate call. It would be a fraudulent call. So uh, know that. Um, you know, that. That's a really good question. And, and today... Another thing that I've been hearing and starting to see is that when we have a financial circumstance like we do now that's so stressful, that's so unknown, that's so confusing, there are many who will attempt to take advantage of that uh, and predators who will attempt to commit fraud and use something they call social engineering to scam you uh, and to defraud you. So great question. It would not be a call from Experian uh, if if um, you know, there's something suspicious. We do not do that. Uh, so uh, similar to your bank, you might get a call from your bank depending on their fraud service. But if you get a call, you make sure that you go to a billing statement or their customer service site online. Don't call that number back that they leave for you. Instead, call them you know, using customer service and tell them you got a call to verify that it's your bank, for example, to make sure it's actually a fraud issue and not someone trying to commit fraud against you. Um, it's kind of scary times in that regard. Um, so the best way is to pay it off. If you can, yes. I mean, it's always better to pay the debt in full if you can. Uh, that's going to be a positive in your credit history. It's going to, to uh, help improve your credit scores over time. So that's the, the best option. Um, this be me. Thanks for joining being, being here. And Jeff Hammond, thanks for joining as well. Uh, Jeff Hammond, is Credit Karma safe for doing taxes? I mean, like I said, I can't speak to Credit Karma and the credit things. I can tell you they're owned by Intuit. Uh, who uh, owns TurboTax. So, uh, you know, it's a good organization so far as I know. Um, and, and so um, something to, to be aware of. Um, so uh, but if you're going to get credit monitoring, come to Experian. That's right there. But So <laughs> I'll make my pitch. Grand3841216, thanks for joining. I don't know how you remember all those numbers when, when you have a username. I can't remember my username, and it's really simple. Uh, but thanks for being here and being part of the chat. Uh, what happens after a disputed item is found to be an error? How long does it take to remove it? So when you dispute something with Experian or any of the other credit reporting companies, the national credit reporting companies, we will go to the source of that information with that dispute. They then have 30 days to respond to the dispute. Typically, it takes 10 to 14 business days, often two to three business days, depending on the nature of the dispute and if there's documentation that we need to have uploaded and transmitted, that sort of thing. But usually it's it's you know, within a, a very, a 10 to 14 days on average. Once they respond, we will update the credit report and send you a notice of the results of the dispute. The source of that information, usually a lender, will then be required by federal law to notify any other credit reporting company that it reported that information to of that change. So Experian will not go to TransUnion or Equifax and TransUnion Equifax will not come to Experian and say, hey, there's been a change as a result of a dispute because we don't know if they reported it to them or not. And there may be other consumer reporting companies that are not credit bureaus, for example, that they reported that information to so the lender then has to report that information to any other consumer reporting agency as a result. So your reports should be updated. I would recommend if you get a response from Experian saying your report's been updated and you check that, that change and it's you know, been made, check your reports with the other credit reporting companies just to be sure that it's updated. It might take a bit longer if you didn't initiate it there. So you know it, it, the timing may be a bit off, so give it a bit of time. But check with them and get your reports. You can get your reports free now once a week from each of the national credit reporting companies at www.annualcreditreport.com. We implemented that service so that if you're affected by COVID-19 or maybe you can get your report, make sure you're tracking everything and it's uh, being updated correctly and showing account statuses, those sorts of things. So check that report uh, and check your reports from the other three. It doesn't affect your credit scores to do that. Uh, doesn't affect lending decisions at all. So you can check your own report as often as you like. So please do that. Uh, Voxy, thanks for joining. Uh, Man, of, Man of Fire 12, thanks for being here. Um, don't pump up the competition credit score. <laughs> Try not to. Uh, bless After Taxes, thanks for joining Felix123RA. Thanks for being here. 
if you have questions, please feel free to ask. I'll do my very best to answer. I'm kind of watching the clock. I'm going to jump off uh, a little bit early because I want to make sure I get over to the the virtual uh, symposium that I'm joining to to host a uh, and moderate a panel on about thin files and credit invisibility. Uh, and want to make sure my technology is going to cooperate. So <laughs> that's always a question. Uh, usually works okay. So I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. As a, so I'm looking down to read questions. Now, Penny Moe, thank you for being here and being part of the chat. That's really what this is all about. Please do feel free to ask any questions. If you're just jumping in, I'm Rod Griffin. I'm Senior Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. This is Credit Chat Live. I try to be here 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern. I've been away for a while. I'm glad to be back and answering questions. Glad to have everybody here. Uh, and again, you can learn more at ex.pn slash credit chat live. And you can join us on Twitter or tomorrow on Wednesdays, uh, every Wednesday uh, for our credit chat. Uh, you can learn more about it at ex.pn slash credit chat. Uh, so we're live now about four days a week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can join me and Christina Roman and Jennifer White on Fridays at 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern on Facebook Live and on Crowdcast. Uh, so go to crowdcast.io. You can learn how to register for our, our uh, program. So um, please be, please join us there. Our, our whole goal is to have a dialogue. It's to share information you need to help answer your questions and make sure you're able to make good decisions uh, based on accurate information and learn more about credit reporting and scores so that they're there to work for you. So um Glad to be here. Always a great experience. Thank you so much, little buddy. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm um, Ms. Yolanda YT. Sorry. Yeah, I've been, like I said it, earlier when we, we started, I pulled away. We uh, stopped broadcasting live uh, in, out of respect for the Black Lives Matter movement and the, the protests and in support of, of that social change. So, wanted to make sure that, you know, we, we showed respect for that and people knew we weren't you know, cluttering the conversation uh, and want to make sure that we get back though, because personal finance and, you know, I believe, and I think, and most of our team believes and my colleagues that personal finance is equally important uh, or at least as an important factor of making sure that people have opportunity and access and success in life uh, and equality in life. And we, we need to address that as well. So sharing information, sharing knowledge, helping each other improve our lives is what we really want to do across the board. Um, oh, and I would say also happy Pride Month uh, as an ally and, and you know, some, many of my closest, dearest friends are, are part of the LGBTQ plus community and, and want to say happy Pride Month. Thank you all you know, for being here and uh, all the, the best. Uh, we hope we can continue to help make change there too. So um, we want to keep moving forward. That's the most important thing. Um, Lucker TJR, thanks for joining. Uh, and Ms. Yolanda Dwighty, thank you. And, and you know, I'm, I'm glad to be, and it's, I knew I'd do this, um, but it's emotional to me uh, and, and important. So i um, glad to have and proud of my team, proud of my company, proud of my family and friends and, and what we stand for. Uh, and so I'm glad to see us moving forward. I'm glad to have you all here. Um, let's talk about credit because this gets weird for me. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, Revelation Ruth, uh, thanks for being here and being part of the chat. If you have questions about credit reporting, credit scoring, fraud and ID theft, um, things I can answer questions about, please do ask. I'll do my very best uh, and um, want to help everybody be successful and get the questions they have. How does the FICO 10 work? That's a great question, uh, Andrea, 2444. I always say when people answer that way that it's a great question they don't know. I can tell you this, uh, FICO 10 and FICO 10T, which T stands for trended, uh, is a new development, but it's not going to change dramatically for most people. Uh, FICO and other scoring companies regularly update their scoring models uh, and in models being formulas and systems to reflect changes in our marketplace and the way people are managing credit and the way that information can be used to help better predict the risk of making loans. And I think what we'll see and other kinds of agreements, but in the case of uh, FICO 10, it's a regular update uh, and th they update information. And so it will be a, a, an incremental change for the most part. And that will be um, 
not a big difference for a lot of people. I think people who are uh, really have really high scores, from what I'm being told, might see their scores go down a bit. People with really low scores might actually see their scores improve a bit. Um, so in the standard scoring system, trended data is really interesting because it is looking at behavior over time or whoop, hit my phone, payment behavior over time. And so that's going to potentially actually bring more people into qualifying uh, because it can look at you know, the, the trends. So is a person, you know, are their debts increasing? Uh, are their late payments in a pattern of getting worse? Uh, were they late, but now they're improving? You know, not just where are you right now? Uh, are your debts decreasing? Is there, are there cycles of activity? So if you have a seasonal kind of job, does that mean you're a you know, good risk or a bad risk if there are periods where you're unable to repay a debt, but other periods where your work picks up and that's a consistent pattern? It might help lenders make loans to people. So I think we're going to see that evolve. Uh, and I think 10, FICO 10 and FICO 10 tier an evolution in that way. It's going to be a gradual increase. Um, so... You know, I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It will also be some time before it becomes uh, the, the standard score or a standard score for lenders. And FICO 8 is still the most commonly used. FICO 9 is on the market, but gradually being adopted. Lenders have to test and evaluate because they want to make sure that if they use a new score, it still accurately reflects risk. It doesn't prevent people who should otherwise qualify from qualifying, so they test it. Uh, so if you have a high score, it will increase 20% and lower score down 20%. Bandera 244. You know, I, I'm always cautious about those numbers because everybody's so different. There are 220 million people or more with credit reports. Every single one of them is different. And the mix of information, the age of the reports, everything can play a part. Uh, so there will be some small change. Uh, and I think, it, 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 as I said, and I think what you're probably hearing too is that at the margins, at the high end and at the low end, you might see some effect for people that are, you know, in – the middle somewhere, they're probably not going to see much change at all. Uh, their scores aren't going to go up. I can tell you this for sure. There's no way that FICO is going to come out with a new score that suddenly says, all those people you approved before are really a bad credit risk. They're not going to do that. It's not going to count, contradict previous scoring models. Um, the, the intent and the goal is always to make sure that people who should qualify do. And if there are people at the edges so that are almost qualifying, um, and there are new, there's new information that can show that they should qualify, but couldn't show that in the past can help them. Uh, they want to bring more people and they don't want to exclude more people from the credit marketplace. Uh, lenders want to make loans. They want to do so safely. And so scores that can help actually bring more customers in, there's something that they're going to want to have, uh, scores that would exclude more people. Isn't something that's going to help them. They want to manage their, their credit risk. Well, um, what we're going through now shuffles the whole deck. I mean, everything is different. So we're, we'll see what happens coming out of this too, uh, you know, out of COVID-19 and all of the things that are happened with that and the, the economic shutdown and all of those things. So it's going to be interesting seeing what, what happens coming from there. Uh, how many days does it take to get an updated score? So little buddy depends on the system, the uh, service that you're, you're using. In many cases, you get a new report once every 30 days, so then you would get a new score as well because there's new data, a new report to calculate a new score. Some systems, uh, you, you can get a new score once a week or once a day. You know, It depends if you're subscribing and how often you get a new report. You have to get a new report for a new score to be calculated. Uh, so check with the, the service provider you're talking to or using, uh, and they should be able to tell you, get a new, if you get a new report once every 30 days, you would get a new score once every 30 days because a new score will be calculated when they get the new report. Otherwise, it's going to stay the same. Uh, so, you know, check. That's what I would check. Um, so six foot five inches. Thanks for joining. Uh, GDT11. Thank you. And Kitty Guava, thank you so much. Congratulations. Hope it works well for you. Love to know how that works. If uh, you're working to build your score, I always mention Experian Boost. You can have your positive cell phone utility payments added to your credit report, your cable TV bills with permission. And if you change your mind, <clears throat> you can tell us to stop and we will. So it's totally in your control. Uh, we're hearing from people still that two out of three people see improvement. About 13% see, uh, or about, pardon me, the, the majority see a, about a 13 point increase. Thin file see about a 19 point increase. So really important too. Um, when they're running your credit for a new home, is there a recommended time period which would not affect your credit score? Yeah, generally when they're, you're applying for a mortgage, 
any mortgage application will be excluded from the score. Uh, usually, you know, what we say just to be safe is any 14 day period. So within 14 day period, uh, 14 day period, often now it's, you know, 14 day period within a rolling 30 day period, some weird kind of thing. But usually if it's 14 day period, sometimes as much as 30 days. Uh, but so two weeks and you'll be fine. The other thing to know is that even then an inquiry is going to have a very minimal impact on your scores. So I, I generally don't worry about inquiries. You're usually not applying for a lot of things. That's not going to be a big issue. If your scores are in good shape, the credit history is in good shape, them checking your report isn't going to cause you to um, have any issues uh, as long as your scores are in good shape. If it's marginal, borderline, then it could. So be aware of that. Um, so um, Dr. Todd Koontz, thanks for joining. Less common, thanks for being here. Uh, when will bankruptcy fall off based on date filed or, or date updated? It's the filing date. So the date you filed. So chapter 13 bankruptcy remains for 10, for seven years, pardon me, from the filing date. Chapter seven bankruptcy remains for 10 years from the filing date. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, and that's the only public record you'll see in your credit report. Uh, thank you all so much. I'm going to jump off a little bit early. I want to make sure I get on for, I'm, uh, as I mentioned, on a, hosting a panel for the CBA Symposium. And so uh, that starts in a bit. I want to make sure my technology is working and that, that I can use it, and probably more than just the technology. I want to make sure I'm capable, <laughs> which is always questionable. So we'll see how that goes with the technology. But thank you all for being here. I plan to be here again, 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern on Thursday. And tomorrow, join us on Twitter at uh, uh, at. E, you can learn more at I'm tongue tied. You can learn more at ex.pn slash credit chat for Twitter chat tomorrow on credit chat or search hashtag credit chat. You can learn more about these Periscope broadcasts and our Facebook live and Crowdcast broadcasts on Friday, 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern. Join me and Christina Roman and Jennifer White. Uh, and we have great discussion. Same thing. Want to help answer your questions, talk about issues that are important. You can learn more at ex.pn slash credit chat live. So thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for all the great questions. Glad to be back and look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Take care, everybody.